freezing or akinesia, I gotta throw all these fancy words. I gotta teach at the university next week, and so some of these slides I, I'm kind of using for both talks, so I put in, um, I had to put in the fancy words because the university's gonna test them on it. So um, basically, freezing is these episodic gait disorders where you just get stuck, um, where you're moving and all of a sudden you just, you, you, you're actually frozen. And uh, people will describe it like their, you know, their feet are, are, are uh, glued to the ground. And uh, uh, freezing is um, it's associated a lot with falls. And uh, it's probably one of the more debilitating uh, symptoms of Parkinson's mobility-wise. Uh, but I'm going to teach you how to overcome it. I'm going to teach you how to overcome it. Now, the th there's a lot of things that, that uh, freezing, freezing episodes can... Um, happen uh, just anywhere, but there are certain triggers that, that seem to, to, uh, to uh, kick in uh, the freezing, and, and, and turning uh, can kick in freezing. Uh, a lot of times, just initiating movement. So if you have, if you're the, have the type of Parkinson's where you get a lot of freezing, um, just trying to initiate movement, you can actually freeze before you start. Um, tight spaces uh, tend to, uh, doorways and thresholds. Um, I have a friend uh, who, He's a big um, business guy, and he's going. He goes to Vegas and makes business deals to get these stores in, in on the strip and whatnot. And he has a heck of a time with changes in threshold because you know in Vegas uh, the surface changes. They'll they'll get out of the elevator and there'll be this huge mosaic floor, and it just triggers in his freezing. And so we had to develop strategies for him to deal with that. Um, thresholds, uh, doorways can can trigger freezing. Um, and elevators and escalators. And elevators are kind of like a, a doorways or thresholds with time. <laughs> so they're actually double, d double uh, freezing because you know, you're, you're worried about the threshold and then, and then you've got like three seconds to, to go. And, and the worst is when you're at elevator and there's three of them and you're over here and that one opens up. You know, and so it's an automatic uh, freeze. And so again, uh, we're gonna talk about strategies to uh, what you guys can overcome these issues. Turning in Parkinson's, um, they, a lot of times people will have a difficult time with, with turning, and uh, uh, it's termed, uh, the term we use is called in block turning. So instead of, you know, you know making a, a big wide turn, uh, a lot of times uh, with the progress Parkinson's, um, you'll turn basically in block on the same block, and, and, and it's, it's this type of uh, emotion to, to, to go and switch directions. And we're going we're gonna to teach you strategies to to, and, and that usually can lead to uh, uh, freezing and falling. And then dyskinesia. Um, dyskinesia is kind of misunderstood, but uh, basically dyskinesia means, you know, um, or oh, there you go, I got the Greek up there, trouble moving. Uh, but it, it's this kind of writhing, excessive movement. And uh, if you've ever seen a recent Michael J. Fox interview, he has lots of dyskinesia. Uh, um, you know, where he's kind of moving around, just sitting and, and his body's moving. Um, that is not a symptom of Parkinson's. The, the dyskinesia is a, um, a, a, sympt it's a symptom of, of too much dopamine, uh, the drug. We'll kind of talk about it when we talk about drugs briefly. Uh, but basically, the dopamine that you take through cinnamon or the, 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 the agonist that you take, um, well, it's usually when you're on cinnamon that you get dis high levels of cinnamon that you get dyskinesia is that it overshoots it because, you know, your body's not producing it. Your body can't modulate it. So it's kind of one of those, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you don't take it, you're a statue. And if you take it in your high doses, you're, you're moving too much. Um, and, and so th those are some things that we're going to talk about how to deal with some of those things. Okay, falls. Um, it's estimated that up to 70% of Parkinson's disease patients will fall annually. Um, individuals with Parkinson's who fall have a two-fold increased risk of sustaining a fracture. And, and that's because of what we talked about before, is that you don't have the postural instability and the protective reactions aren't functional. So if, if somebody else falls in the same age group, they'll have some protective reactions where they can break their fall with Parkinson's. You, don't, you lose those reactions and, and you just fall. And these are just some things that can give you risk factors for falling. Orthostatic hypotension is, is, is means low blood pressure, and that, that, that can happen. Um, it's usually a, a side effect of the medications. And so you gotta be careful if you get up real quick, 
you know, that you get kind of dizzy, those things can, can uh, uh, increase your risk of falling. And then, of course, it's a no-brainer that freezing and, and uh, loss of protective reactions will increase your risk. Now, we talked, all those things are, are motor complications, and those are, that's what we're going to talk about as far as strategies. That's what we're going to address. But there's a lot of other uh, complications that are non-motor related that you guys are, are uh, uh, I'm sure, aware of. And this is just kind of a list. They're doing some studies now to try to um, diagnose Parkinson's earlier. And one of the studies, uh, um, actually, it's Webb Ross is a neurologist, works for the VA, and does a lot of the Parkinson's work in Hawaii. Uh, he, they're, they're part of a national study looking at simple like tests that you can take um, to, to try to predict early uh, Parkinson's. And the tests are related upon sense and smell. And because uh, they, uh, from do, doing the retrospective studies, they suspect that the loss of uh, smell is one of the first things, one of the first symptoms. And, and so they want to see if they can diagnose it earlier to see if they can do some things that can uh, decrease the, the symptoms. Uh, pain is another one I'm just going to mention. Um, uh, pain in Parkinson's is not really understood. And I, I see lots of people with Parkinson's, and um, some people will complain about pain, and usually the pain is in the large muscle groups, and uh, the quads is the one I, I hear a lot. Uh, people have back pain in those types of things, and I think that's more related to posture. We're going to talk about that, but just kind of these, these paresthesias, these kind of, um, like uh, some people get them in their feet. I had one woman describe, or a couple women describe, uh, like they're walking on glass. Uh, um, so it's really not well, well understood. Some people think it's some, it might be a side effect of medication. Uh, I suspect like the, the big muscle groups where people are having pain are, are maybe due to uh, what, I, what they call ischemia, where your blood, which means lack of blood, so oxygen, because of the rigidity, your, your muscles are kind of clamped down and, and, and you're not getting good circulation. Um, there was a couple of studies that just came out looking at therapeutic massage and those types of things, and I, I think they're good things to do, but uh, uh, they're, again, they're, they're, probably, they're more symptomatic. Um, Okay, before we go into kind of the treatments, um, there, there's a couple broad categories, and this is kind of a more academia, but uh, they kind of broke it out to maybe three basic categories in presentation of Parkinson's. And um, one is tremor dominant. And, and, and those are the, the people who don't have the bradykinesia so much and don't have, don't have freezing at all. They have no difficulty with initiating terminating movement, but it's just tremor. And, and that's associated with the... Uh, uh, best outcome, prognosis-wise, because uh, they don't fall, you know, and so their mobility is, is better. They have some other issues with that. Also, uh, you know, there's some treatments that, that work well, and we'll talk about that for that. The bradykinesia and akinesia uh, group is, is the one that's associated highest with, uh, with, with falls. And the bottom one's kind of a hybrid. 